The name of this video is Blender 2.63 Bezier Curve Tutorial. First, a word about the new version of Blender. Blender 2.63 was just released today, April 27, 2012. There are many new features which I'll discuss in future tutorials. Two big enhancements are the B-Mesh support, meaning polygons of any number of size are supported, as well as enhancements to the Cycles render engine. Refer to my 2.62 Cycles tutorial for the basics of Cycles in Blender 2.62. Also note the new graphic, which is an image from the new Mango Open Movie Project. You can read more about it at mango.blender.org. Shooting of the movie will begin in May. Congratulations and a big thank you to the Blender development team for all their hard work. My future videos will be on Blender 2.63 as I follow the general release versions for my tutorials. The purpose of this video is to explore some of the ways that you can manipulate a Bezier curve. This video is a follow-up to my Bezier circle tutorial which covers some of the basics such as control points and control handles. This tutorial is a more in-depth treatment of Bezier curves. I'll press a key to go to the default scene, go to top view numpad 7 and orthographic view numpad 5, then I'll add a Bezier curve, shift A curve Bezier. A Bezier curve is defined by a set of control points, each having a set of handles, which control the shape of the curve moving into the control point and moving out of the control point. The default Bezier curve has two control points. I tab into edit mode. These points can be selected and translated like vertices in a mesh. The steepness of the curve can be controlled by moving the handle closer to or farther from the control point. In edit mode, the curve has a series of arrows that indicate the direction of the curve. The arrows point from the front end to the back end. The resolution tells you the number of arrows. By default, the Bezier curve is a 3D curve, so the control points can be moved along any of the three axes. I'll go to front view, numpad 1. In front view, the Z axis runs from top to bottom. I'll select one of the endpoints and move it in the Z direction. I'll rotate the view to show that it's three-dimensional. I'll press Control z to undo the move. Control points can be constrained to the XY axis by pressing the 2D button in the Object Data Curve section. I'll press the 2D button. Now I can't move the control point in the Z direction. When a curve is 2D and is constrained to the XY axis, the arrows don't display. To add a control point to the existing Bezier curve, select a control point by right-clicking on it. Position the 3D cursor to where you want to add the control point. While holding down the control key, left-click. I'll go to Top View. If no control points are selected, I'll press the A key to deselect the control point. If you position the 3D cursor to a location and left-click while holding the control key down, a control point unconnected to the original curve is created at that location. I'll select the new control point, position the 3D cursor to a location, and left click while holding the control key down to add a new control point to the selected control point. What you see is actually one Bezier curve. We can prove it by selecting all the control points by pressing the A key. All the points have been selected. Press the A key to deselect all the control points. Not all the control points are connected. Each connected part of the curve is called a B-spline. I'll go to the object data and scroll to the active spline panel. The active spline is the spline containing the last selected control point. I'll click the cyclic U checkbox. This closes the active spline connecting its endpoints. Notice that when a spline is closed, the surface, a gray area filling the, filling the area of the closed spline, is created. The other splines are not closed, they're open. In Blender terms, a closed spline is called cyclic and an open spline is called non-cyclic. You can toggle between cyclic and non-cyclic for the active spline by going to the tool shelf and clicking the toggle cyclic button. You can also use the Alt-C hotkey. Right now, the Bezier curve has a flat two-dimensional shape. I'll tab into object mode and rotate the view. If I press the G key, all the splines of the curve move. If I press F12 to render, only the closed spline renders. I'll press Escape to return to 3D view. 
go to top view and tab back into edit mode. I'll select the control points of the open spline and press the delete key and then select segment leaving just the closed spline. Let's give this Bezier curve some depth. There are a number of ways to do it. The simplest way, which I'll show here, is to go into the geometry panel of the object data section and set the extrusion value. I'll enter 1, making the curve rather thick. The edges can be beveled by setting a value to bevel depth. I'll set it to 0.5. I'll tab into object mode. Now we have a solid shape created from the Bezier curve. I'll tab into edit mode. Even after it's been extruded and beveled, the shape of the curve can still be controlled by its control handles. You can see the control handles protruding out of the shape. I'll select a control point, press the G key and move it. The R key for rotate and the S key for scale also work. Note that the object's shape adjusts perfectly to these transformations, something that's more awkward in mesh modeling. This is all the result of some complex mathematical calculations. Google Bezier curves and B-spline for all the gory details. I'll tab into object mode. Often you'll want to convert the curve to a mesh for more detailed modeling after you've precisely defined the object's shape. The amount of geometry is determined by the U setting, which defaults to 12. This creates a rather dense mesh. Set the U setting to 6. To convert the curve object to a mesh object, press Alt-C and select Mesh from Curve. If you tab into edit mode and go into wireframe mode, you'll see that the sides of the mesh have nice edge loops and the top and bottom are triangulated. You might need to do some cleanup, especially to create quads out of the triangles up in the, um, the top and bottom to create a smoother topology. A thorough knowledge of Bezier curves is one of the keys to Blender mastery. Blender uses Bezier curves in many places, such as in animation. Check my animation playlist to give you a taste of this. I hope this tutorial gives you a basis for understanding some of the finer aspects of modeling with Bezier curves. More curve tutorials will follow. Happy blendering!